trained and conditioned himself to try to fly. He wasn't an aviator, wasn't even a pioneer. In fact, man had already walked on the moon seven months earlier. But unlike Aldrin and Armstrong, this man had no spaceship. His launching pad was an amalgam of wood and metal. And unlike the supersonic Concorde, which had flown its maiden voyage the year before, this man wasn't out to reckon with speed. He was Venko Bogatai, Yugoslavian ski jumper. And by virtue of his inability to get off the ground one day, he became a symbol of something so human to which we can all relate, the agony of defeat. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. This vintage footage from early 1970 is not the signature millions associate with that famous line. No, instead, it is this unfortunate Slovenia. And to learn his story, we must go to Oberstdorf, Germany, original home of the sport of ski flying, the site of that year's international competition. ABC's Wide World of Sports was there. Calling the action, Bud Palmer and Art Devlin. Art, a four-time Olympic ski jumper himself, reflects on Venko Bogatai's first jump at the international competition. It was a gorgeous day, and all the nations brought their young kids there. And Yugoslavia did not have a strong jumping team. They are just getting started. And those poor kids had to jump in that big hill. And after the first round, and I saw young Venko Bogatai jump, I said right then and there, this kid is nothing but an accident on the way to happen. And it sure happened. Complicating the situation for the competitors, the weather. The winds increased. The in-run became icier, forcing the beneficials to shorten the jump and avoid disaster. The stage was set for Finko's final leap. The youngster, with inexperience, he fell on his first jump. A lot of speed in that track. Look, look, out! look at him go! Oh, oh. oh baby! What a terrible fall! Naturally, we try to report right away what happened to someone, and uh, the report we got was that he wanted to go back up and take another jump. He didn't think he was hurt, but the docs had no part of that, and they took him in the meat wagon down to well, the hospital, which was probably 10 miles away, and uh, the, he called back and told everybody he was fine, and he'd be back again. <laughs> but how could he return after a spill like that? For all who saw it, this fall represented the truest definition of the agony of defeat. We were shocked. We were, we were screaming in the truck. My gosh, did you see that? Oh my gosh, oh my, oh. And we were concerned and we watched him be carried away in the snow. After our initial shock, it didn't take us long to want to have that disaster become the agony of defeat. When Vanko took the fall in 1970, we were still using an opening comprised of film shots of stylized athletes portraying the different types of motions in their events. And I decided to go into the tape room one time and match the shots that were on the stylized tape with real action shots taken from real shows from the ABC Sports Library. When you think of the thrill of victory and agony of defeat, there's only one shot now that comes to mind in everybody's mind, which is obviously Venko Bogatai. Although Venko's crash became a fixture of the wide world open and symbolic of the show for millions, there did come a point when a change was discussed. I felt that perhaps maybe we were being exploitive in showing that spill week after week after week, and that maybe we ought to remove uh, Vinko from the billboard. And I raised that possibility at a wide world sports meeting, and I was figuratively met with a chorus of boos from everybody in the meeting. How could you delete someone that had become so popular? At the Wide World of Sports 20th anniversary, he received a standing ovation in a room filled with athletes such as Peggy Fleming and Muhammad Ali. When I was told that I was being invited to ABC's Wide World of Sports 20th anniversary, I knew that I would not be invited if I weren't popular. But when I arrived and saw how many great athletes were there and how well they greeted me, well, I had never expected such a reaction. I was shocked. He had this grin on his face like you just wouldn't believe, he couldn't believe it. And Muhammad Ali was one of the first to get Vinko's autograph. We'll send super. 
I am very glad that even though I was never an Olympic or world champion because of wide world of sports, I am remembered by so many. Over the past quarter century, there have been inevitable changes. Our presidents, popular culture, and even here in wide world of sports. But through it all, there has been and always will be Vinko. Oh, baby. What a terrible fall. Ouch, babe. Brent, I can't think of another athlete who is more popular here in the U.S. than in his own country. Is Vinko still involved in ski jumping back home? Oh, not really. He helps out with some uh, local ski jumping competitions, but Vinko is now 48 years old. He spends much of his spare time landscape painting. Uh, but Robin, he too wonders about his fame in this country. Yeah, he will forever be linked to this show. All right, Brent, thank you very much. We'll see you next week.